Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2. In the last episode, we came here to the creepy organic collector ship. We have extracted some data that um, should help us navigate the Omega 4 relay, but also, not only was this a trap which we've now got to escape, but also the elusive man knew it was a trap. And he sent us into it nonetheless. Let's give me some real questioning for him when we get back out of this mess, presuming we get out. So prepare yourself for an episode of fighting lots of collectors. This is why we have Garrus, not Garrus, um, Thane and Miranda here, both are good with war. And the main the main defense system you'll be facing here is bar biotic barriers, which are very handy to warp. Oh, that's Harbinger. Warp him. Warp him. There we go. I've switched, I think I mentioned this last episode, but yeah, I've switched their, um, oh, bloody hell. I've switched the... I've put warp for the pair of them on hotkeys on D-pad left and right, which I've never actually used before, having squad attack hotkeys. But it's bloody handy, and it's way faster than bringing up the blinking power wheel every time. We also last episode got the Viper Sniper Rifle, which is currently low on ish on ammo. I'm trying to, basically I always try and keep a few shots in there, but generally we'll switch to. The Locust just never seems to run out of ammo, especially with the extra rounds upgrade, so I'm basically just sticking on the Locust. While I, whenever I'm trying to build up ammo for the Viper, then the, what's it called, Widow even. And then once there is enough ammo in the Widow, uh, you can switch to that for a little bit and whatnot. Okay, Harbinger's there. I'm going to Widow him up a little bit because he's getting real close. <gasps> the Widow is so ludicrously powerful. I love it and everything about it. Neural shock. Eh. Oh no, damn it, missed. He was in cover, apparently. Even though his head was clearly sticking out, he was officially speaking in cover. I suppose I benefit from that sometimes as well, so... Come on, stand up. Neuroshock! Yeah. Neuroshock is nice because it just... Oh, bloody hell. It briefly stuns them, but it just has a very quick re recharge time, which is really handy. Um, so you can just use it quickly, boink, and stun them. The stun will... It'll be recharged by the time the stun wears off again, so very handy. Oh! The ones to watch out for are the ones called Guardians, because they have barriers, which are very problematic. Other than that, most collectors will go down fairly easy, except that one's being Harbingered. As soon as Harbinger crops up, warp him um, to get rid of the barrier, and then focus on the armor and whatever you do. I missed him, damn it. Oh, bloody hell! Oh, say hello to something new. These are Abominations. They are basically... They've, they've disappeared. Where did they go? That's not an encouraging thing to hear. I Okay, so Abominations are like advanced versions of the Reaper Husks. So they will basically, they look like they're on fire and they'll pretty much just run into you and explode. They're kind of suicide troops. And they can be very problematic to fight through large numbers of. And that's exactly how the game throws them at you. Uh, let's grab a med kit. Oh, I've got full um, medicine apparently. Ooh, element zero. There's a decent amount of element zero on this ship, so that's... Worthwhile. As ever, if you're lost, you've got your little magic crazy taxi arrow if you press either stick in, actually, apparently. Um, because I appear to be lost. Um, where do you want to go? I want to go here. It's nice that one doesn't just tell you the overall direction, it tells you the exact direction to go in. There are lots of bits like this where you drop down, which pretty much stop you from going back on yourself here. Ah. Stay up here. Um, get your squad mates into cover up here. And because, as you can see... There's a Praetorian over there. Um, there would be husks thrown at you. Try and do what you can about them from a distance. You don't want to be anywhere up on that Praetorian unless you can, if you can absolutely... Wait, I've confused myself. Unless you can't avoid it, stay the fuck away from that thing because they're very dangerous in close range. Ooh, but we have a nice weapon. So, tricks for Praetorians. Particle beam to bring their barrier down and then once the barrier's down, lay into them with... Particle beam will work, but I'll... The... Um, what's it called will be more effective for me. Um, the Widow. Warp is very handy on it. This is the other reason why I kind of wanted um, warp-capable squad mates for this. Ooh. Can't even see how much damage that's doing because it throws the barrier back up the moment it's gone. Let's neural shock him. Oh, I really do want to kind of stay in cover where possible here. Um, oh, they've come around the side. Bloody hot. Oh, that was a real waste of particle beam. Oh, the Praetorians come up the side. That's not good for anyone. Well, not it, though, either, so that's that's kind of nice. Right, everyone hit it with everything you got. You warp it, you incinerate it. By you, I mean me. 
And let's try and see if we can move in here a little bit. Take out this guy. We're running low on heavy weapon ammo. Oh, it will have used Death Choir on both of my squad mates. That's not good. Lot of things about this situation aren't good. Help! Okay, right. I've got a good bit of distance between me and the Praetorian. Same cannot be said for my squad mates. I'll try and take out the collectors I can from here and I've got a bit more time to think. Ah, there's the Praetorian. Show rearing its ugly head again. Thane appears to be dead. Let's unity him back up again. Okay. Thane, warp its barrier, please. Miranda, warp its barrier, please. And time for the Widow once again. And boink! I think we got it. Nope, it's doing Death Choir again. Uh, once it's up, we can warp the shit out of its barrier, hopefully. Thane's recharge. And Miranda's recharge. Ooh, double warp. That was nice. Yeah, the Mantis... Not Mantis, whatever the fuck this weapon's called. The Widow does not do a great deal against barriers. Oh, you triggered it again, Miranda, you silly dope. Uh, Locust is much better against barriers, I suppose. I'm kind of wanting to save some of my ammunition a little bit. Ooh, the double warp. It is very handy being able to do that very quickly. And then fire, 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 fire. Oh! Oh, <laughs> that thing got way too close. Whew. Man, this is a, that's just a scary kind of, I guess you call it a boss fight there, because you have not really got any room to maneuver, and there's a lot of collectors pinning you down here, and there's a Praetorian right on top of you. That's arguably the worst place to come across a Praetorian. But we managed. We did it. It's really interesting looking at the waveforms from this episode, because I've got my audio up on the side. The waveforms for this episode versus last episode. Yeah, you can always tell when I've had a kind of combat-heavy episode. Aha. Uh -huh. You always tell when I've had a combat-ish episode because there's just so much more talking. And it's louder! Um, which is always amusing to see. Oh, this doesn't look good. This looks very exposed. I'm just gonna take up. I can't take cover there. Wonderful. I hear collector wings. There we go. Ow. Okay, there's a guardian up there. Can you guys do something about that? Possibly not. Oh well. Oh, oh, it's become Harpinger. Ah, there's an abomination. They're quite easy to stop, especially with cryo ammo. Um, just don't let them close on you because then they will fuck you up. Oh, that was nice. That's incinerated as well. Wow, did I incinerate the shit out of Harbinger? Incinerator's very powerful. Come on, there we go. And this, oh, I just, I can't get over how handy the. Oh, there's more abominations coming down. I can't get over how handy the locust is because it's just so accurate. Oh, there's another two up there. Wow. A pair of warps will kill that one in one. That's wonderful. I'm loving these hotkeys for squad powers. You see under each of their faces there, there's like a grey line thing? That says that they're currently recharging. When that goes away, there we go. We know they're recharged, so you can keep an eye on that to make sure that you always know when they're recharged, because otherwise the risk is you also use D-pad left and right to make them move. If they're... If you use the D-pad buttons... Oh, there's Harbinger. If you use the D-pad buttons while they are recharging, they'll try and move right up to the enemy, which for especially someone like Thane, who's like heavy weapon, oh, sniper kind of base, he's not good up close. And even Miranda's kind of... These two are both powerful, but squishy. Uh, oh, there's a... a bomb, not an abomination, a Scion coming up the way there. Let's see what we can do with that from a distance. It's Widow time. Alright, let's incinerate, warp, and warp it. Wonderful. Oh, uh, that would have been a great shot if it had hit. Let's actually do an old cloak shot on it. I don't do this very much, but it does do extra damage occasionally. And with the Widow, we might as well. God, the recharge time is so long on Assassin's Cloak, though. It's an interesting concept, but I really just don't feel it's worth it a lot of the time. Right, with that done, I think we're nearly out of this mess. Uh, Commander, I hate to rush you, but those weapons are about to come online. Might want to double time it, you know, so we can leave before they blow the normal. Well, didn't we get all these upgrades from the Normandy? Isn't it much more capable now? I'm going to switch to the Locust because I remember what happens here. Hey, 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 Ow, 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 ow. Shit. Shit. I should hit that. Oh. I, I can't see or do anything. Help. Now I'm trapped against a wall. Someone's dead. Miranda's dead. Oh, God. That's a lot of husks. This is nice to have anything that has splash damage, which unfortunately we don't really have at this point. You can get that for incinerating. In fact, when we next level up incinerate, that's exactly what I will be going for. Thank you, Thane. Help, help, 
Ugh, give the fucking. Oh, God. It's, now you can just see. These aren't even abominations, they're just husks. See how much they could pin you down if they get you cornered. From a distance, piss easy to take them on. But, good lord. I actually fired that and there wasn't anything there, so that's why I kind of went through all of them. You just gotta, you can't let them close on you, and unfortunately, the game knows that and throws you them coming around a bloody blind corner, clever bastard. And I'm coming low, close to running out of locust ammo. Turns out, it is possible! It's just unlikely. Oh, his bloody hell, they, ooh, good lord. They just keep on coming. Are we good? I think we're good. Miranda, get up. Oh, that is not a happy position to be in. She does not look comfortable. <sighs> oh, let's use another bloody unity on it. Alright. Are we good? I think we may be good. Hopefully we're good. Yeah, there's the shuttle. Commander, we have to go. You heard the man. Everybody on to the Normandy. Move! Strap in, Well, do you want the good news or the bad news? Good news is we've beaten the mission. Bad news is there is an upgrade there, a tech damage upgrade, which is just after the fight with the Praetorian, which I missed. <sighs> Can I be asked to do an entire mission again just for it? Not really. Slap up the Visualizer Doctor and put a red mark through that one. We will not be getting that because we've missed our chance to get it forever. Oh well. Call coming in from the Elusive Man, Commander. I figure you've got a few words for him too. Shepard, looks like Edie extracted some interesting data before the collector ship came back online. Cut the act. You set us up and you better have a damn good reason for it. We needed information on the Omega-4 relay. That required direct access to collector data. It was too good an opportunity to pass up. Agreed. But I don't like surprises, especially when my ass is on the line. I put you at risk, yes. But without that information, we don't reach the Collector homeworld, and you and every other human may as well be dead. It was a trap, but I was confident in your abilities. And don't forget Edie. The Collectors couldn't have anticipated her. You could have told me the plan. You say I'm important, but you sure try hard to get me killed. I needed the Collectors to believe they had the upper hand. Telling you could have tipped them off in any number of ways. Besides, I wouldn't have sent you in if I didn't think you could succeed. I don't risk people. There are always alternatives. You may not like being on the receiving end, neither would I. But the facts are with me. As much as we try to avoid them, these decisions need to be made. But more importantly, it paid off. Edie confirmed our suspicions. The Reapers and Collector ships use an advanced identify friend foe system that the relays recognize. All we need to do is get our hands on one of those IFFs. I was just on the Collector ship. Why didn't you say anything about finding their IFF? As I said, Edie just confirmed it. Besides, you wouldn't have had time to find and extract it, but we have options. An Alliance science team recently determined that the Great Rift on the planet Clendigan is actually an impact crater from a mass accelerator weapon. A very old mass accelerator. I sent a team to find either the weapon or its target. They found both. The weapon was defunct, but it helped us plot the flight path of the intended target. A 37 million year old derelict reaper. We found it damaged and trapped in the gravity of a brown dwarf. Aren't brown dwarfs basically stars that didn't quite make it? Simply put, but accurate. They're gas giants that don't quite have the masses of stars. Expect gale force winds and extremely high temperatures. 
The Reaper has a mass effect field that keeps it in orbit, likely an automated response to the external threats. It's stable, but I won't call it safe. I saw what Sovereign did to the Citadel fleet. Hard to imagine anything could stop something that powerful. This vessel is a relic from a battle waged while mammals took their first steps on Earth. There's no trace of the species that took the shot. Perhaps it was their one moment of defiance before being wiped out. I only believe you because I doubt you'd repeat yourself so soon. It's no less a risk, Shepard. We lost contact with Dr. Chandana's team shortly after they boarded. Initial reconnaissance revealed no clues, and it was too risky to commit more resources. But now we need that IFF. I'll forward the coordinates to Joker. In the meantime, I suggest you tell your crew I didn't risk their lives unnecessarily. It will make things easier going forward. Edie, tell the crew to assemble. We've got a lot to talk about. Of course, Shepard. So the elusive man didn't sell us out. Could have fooled me. Lied to us. Used us. Needed access to the Collector databanks. Necessary risk. He tries something like that again and the Collectors will be the least of his problems. Edie, are you sure this IFF is gonna work? My analysis is accurate, Shepard. I have also determined the approximate location of the Collector homeworld based on navigational data from their vessel. Can't be right. Edie doesn't make mistakes. The Collector homeworld is located somewhere in the galactic core. Can't be. The core is just black holes and exploding suns. There are no habitable planets there. Could be an artificial construction, space station protected by powerful mass effect fields and radiation shields. Even the Collectors don't have that kind of technology. The Collectors are just servants of our real enemy. And we've all seen what their masters are capable of. They built the mass relays and the Citadel. Who's to say they can't build a space station surrounded by black holes? No wonder nobody's ever returned from a trip through the Omega-4 mass relay. The logical conclusion is that a small safe zone exists on the far side of the relay, a region where ships can survive. Standard relay transit protocols would not allow safe transport. Drift of several thousand kilometers is common and would be fatal in the galactic core. The Reaper IFF must trigger the relay to use more advanced encrypted protocols. Just because we can follow the Collectors through the relay doesn't mean we can take them out. I don't want to go after them until I know we're ready. Sooner or later we need that IFF. I say, why wait? It's a derelict Reaper. What if the Collectors are waiting for us? We may want to build up our team before we take that kind of risk. The more people we have on our side, the better our chances of success. We need to keep building up the team. It's your call, Commander. Whatever you decide, we're with you. Well, that's classic elusive man right there. Ends justify the means. Ugh, and it's annoying. I don't know if that quite counts as betraying us. He kind of did, but it's all very dodgy. So we have the option now of the Derelict Reaper in the Nemesis system. I'm not going to be doing that for a long time, because when you do that it starts various countdowns for events that you can't stop. And I don't want to start that until I'm definitely ready, so that's going to be a long way in the future. But that's our next kind of plot mission, I suppose, kind of main story. For now, I'm just going to do a bit of research. Um, we got damage protection, which would be nice to have. And that gives us an extra upgrade, which is the Redundant Field Generator. Sometimes when Shepard's shields go down, they are instantly fully restored. Basically a backup generator that sometimes works, which is quite nice. Got Palladium coming out my ass, so I'll go for that as well. Wonderful. And I'm going to hold the episode there. Next episode, we're going to be doing a few side missions, and then it's going to be getting the usual kind of gathering new squad mates, doing some more loyalty missions, that kind of stuff. So thank you very much for watching, and hope you'll join me next time. Thank you very much, and good day.